In this example, we've got a channel that is five meters wide, so the base of the channel B is five meters wide. We're told the Manning's roughness for the channel is 0.02, and the slope of the channel, the longitudinal slope, is one over 2,000. And what the question is asking for is what is the flow depth of this channel Y? So in the last example, we were given the flow depth and had to work out the flow rate. In this example, we're given the flow rate as 6.5 meters cubed per second, but we're not given Y, we're asked to work out Y. So in essence, this is the same as the last example, but we're working backwards to try to find what Y is. So if we begin at the same place we began last time with the continuity equation, we know that the flow rate is the velocity of the water in the channel times by the area of the water in the channel. So to start with, we know what the flow is, so we've, we're given the flow, but we can't work out the velocity or the area because we don't have y. What we can do is we can replace u with Manning's equation. So we know that Manning's equation tells us that u is equal to the hydraulic radius to the power of 2 over 3 times the square root of the channel's slope divided by Manning's n. So this gives us an expression for our velocity. And we can replace u in this equation, in the continuity equation, with Manning's equation. So we can say that our flow rate q is going to be r to the 2 over 3 times square root of s over n, which is our Manning's equation for velocity, times by the cross-sectional area of the flow. So our flow rate is actually going to be equal to all of these terms. So to start with, we know we've got n, we're given that in the question, we've got s, we're given that in the question, but area is still unknown and hydraulic radius is still unknown. So what we want to do is write this out in a way that our only unknown in the equation is y. So if we think about this, the hydraulic radius of our channel is the area of the channel over the wetted perimeter. And we know that the area is the base of the channel times the flow depth and the hydraulic radius, I'm sorry, the wetted perimeter is the base of the channel plus two times the flow depth. So if we plug that back into the equation where R is, we end up with our hydraulic radius as the width of the channel times the depth of the flow over the width of the channel plus two times the depth of the flow to the power of 2 over 3 times square root of s over n and then our area is again just going to be the width of the channel times by the flow depth and now we can see that actually the only unknown in this equation is y so we've got n we've got s we're given them in the question we're also given b in the question so the only unknown in this equation is y. So what we can do is say that our q needs to be 6.5 meters cubed per second. Our hydraulic radius is b times y over b plus 2y. So our width is 5 meters. So 5y divided by b, which is 5 meters, plus 2 times y. It's the power of 2 over 3 times by square root of our slope, so our slope is 1 over 2000, divided by our Manning's n value of 0 0.02, times by the width of the channel and the flow depth, to give us our cross-sectional area, so the width of the channel is 5 metres, and we don't know our flow depth. So now, the only unknown in this channel, sorry, in this equation, is our y value, which is what we're trying to find. So we know that 6.5 must be equal to all of these terms, and the only unknown in the equation is y. However, this is going to be extremely difficult to solve mathematically for y. 
So the simplest way to actually solve this, to find out what our flow depth is, is by undertaking a process of trial and error. So if we think about what our flow depth y is going to be in meters, we can use this equation to see what value of q we get in terms of meters cubed per second. And we want to keep varying y until our q value is equal to 6.5 meters cubed per second. So we're going to have to start out by making a guess of our y value. So I'm going to start by saying our y value is 0.5 meters. If you plug 0.5 into this equation, it will tell you that the flow is 1.56 meters cubed per second. So we're going to need to increase the flow depth because our, our flow rate is smaller than the, the flow that we need. So let's increase our flow depth by 0.5. So let's take it to one meter. And that gives us a flow rate of 4.47 meters cubed per second when we work through this equation, which is still too small. So we need to increase our flow depth further. So let's try for a flow depth of 1.5 meters. If you put Y as 1.5 meters, that gives you a flow of eight meters per second. So now the flow is bigger than the answer that we need. So we know that our flow depth is somewhere between one and 1.5. So let's try 1.2 meters flow depth. If you plug 1.2 into this equation, it will give you a discharge of 5.83. So we know that that's slightly smaller than what we need. So we need to increase our flow depth a bit, little bit further. If we enter 1.3, that gives us a flow of 6.54 meters cubed per second which I think is close enough to our, our desired flow of 6.5 meters cubed per second to say that our flow depth in this question would be 1.3 meters so if we have a flow down our channel of 6.5 meters cubed per second our roughness is 0.02 our slope is 1 in 2000 our width is 5 meters and our flow is 6.5 meters cubed per second then by a process of trial and error, using Manning's equation and the continuity equation, we can find out our flow depth of 1.3 meters.